Today, I'm here with Marcia Griffin. She is the founder and CEO of Home Free USA. Thank you for being here, Marcia. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I feel like I'm at home here at Mortgage Bankers Association. Well, you and I have known each other for several years yes. now. I'd like you to explain what was the spark that ignited Home Free USA? That is a really, really great question because Home Free USA is a part of the community side of the mortgage industry, quite frankly, the community counseling uh, side of the industry. And actually, Marsha, I, I, I have to say that home, the idea for Home Free USA was germinated at an MBA conference. Really? <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, there's just so many ties with you guys, even from when I started, this is almost 30 years ago, to today. But just to give you a little bit of uh, background here, when I was in college, look, I did not know what I wanted to do. My husband came to, Jim came to uh, uh, Fisk University, which is a historically black college and university in, uh, in Nashville to recruit. He was recruiting for the Wharton School. And we just got to talking about business and you know, in school and you need to come to Wharton. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I know my parents are not going to pay for this uh, after paying for college. And we just decided that we could change the world. So we didn't get married till years later, but the idea uh, really uh, of changing the world, doing something significant to help people who don't have a voice, people who are economically disadvantaged. We just really felt that we could bring a lot to the table because I see myself, quite frankly, as one of those people in terms of trying to find one's way and you know, the typical thing for women. We're always searching and trying to do better. Fortunately for me, I was able to meet a person who had the same idea. So, you know, through the years, we, from the beginning, we decided Look, we were going to make a difference some way or another. We were going to change the world, make others better. And um, so through the years, we um, began doing a lot of interesting things, always very entrepreneurial. He is very entrepreneurial, so am I. Um, and, and quite frankly, that led us to the Mortgage Bankers Association. We were at a conference, and this was in the late 90s. So at this MBA conference, this was the president's conference, and the discussion started about how are we going to increase home ownership among people of color. Now, I mean, my God, we're still talking about this just today, uh, but nonetheless, this was in the 90s, and, I, and this was in December, and I decided I was gonna come back in January I'm going to turn this around. This is exactly my calling. And at that point, I had a marketing firm. So I, I, I understood, quite frankly, the need for reaching people, reaching their hearts and minds and getting them to respond and understand what, needs to, what they needed to do in order to change their lives for the better. So, you know, from the marketing at this conference, at your, the MBA, uh, President's Conference. I came back in January. I started a focus group. I decided I'm really going to change the world now, but on the mortgage side, on the mortgage side. And really, I felt, quite frankly, then and now that our job is to bring the two together in a positive and profitable way, bring the, the industry together with the people who want to buy, with the homeowners who want to be able to keep their homes, with the Gen Zers who want to get into the industry. And so this is what I've been doing for the last 30 years. It's been up, it's been down, the typical, uh, the typical entrepreneurial uh, venture, and but it's been wonderful. Well, I have to tell you about an experience I had watching you in action. Oh. So we were getting ready to start the Consumer Affairs Advisory Council, yeah. which you're a member of. Yes. This is going back pre-pandemic, so let's say right. six years ago or so. And I always look for you in these meetings because I always like to catch up with you and your 10 card hadn't been picked up yet. In true Marcia fashion, you come in, 
but you're about 10 minutes late, which is not like you. And you have the, um, one of the people who are working at the hotel coming in with you, and you're digging out your business card, and you said, now you call me, because I can help you. And you said, I'm so sorry, but I need to help him get with a housing counselor, and we're gonna do that later today. And then you start, you took your seat at the meeting. So I know this is a passion of yours. <laughs> Wherever you go, you're trying to help people, and Absolutely. we need more people like you. You know, and, and I must say, that people want to be helped. People, the average person, home buyers, the customers that that uh, your members serve, everyone wants to wants to do better. The question is how. You know, you, you you know, in life we have to engage and be around people who can guide us, who can encourage us. I mean, I think for women, this is what we look for for sure. And this is real. This is what counseling is all about. You know, it's about giving people the 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 path that they need. You have, if you actually want to become a homeowner, these are the things you need to do, and we're going to stand by your side. And of course, for your industry, your side of the industry, Marsha, our job is to ensure that when they get to a mortgage lender that they can get approved. I mean, this is really what the, what our work is. And I think that so often uh, counseling organizations are not recognized for the value that they bring to get people approved. Now, and which means that we need to reach out to more people, bring them into us, and the ones who are ready to go, get them to a lender. But there are millions of people who are almost ready, but not so ready. Many just need encouragement. Many, you know, they just really don't know what the first steps are. They don't know who to trust. Uh, they don't know what to do next. And this is our job. And so in, in working and counseling people and guiding them, quite frankly, we want to, and it's very important that, or that, that community organizations, counseling organizations, partner with MBA members um, to show the world, look, we're together. It's about business. We do one thing, you do another. The realtors uh, have another job, but we've got to work together. But, but our job is to make sure that people understand that where there's a will, there's a way. You know, that they can do it, <laughs> you know, but well, we've got to work together and you have to have a road map. We call it a, a map, a mortgage achievement plan. So this is what we do and we're very proud. And we're, we're even more proud of the fact that none of the people who have been through the Home Free USA pre-purchase program have gone into foreclosure. Wow. None. Wow, 30 years in the making. 30 years in the making. Now, let me just say, this is not because we're miracle workers. <laughs> it is really because we preach and teach on the pre-purchase side. Guys, look, if you have a problem, anything happens, somebody gets sick, lose a job, whatever, call us first because you have got to keep your house and we're gonna make sure that we work with you in order to do so. I must say some people had to move, but they didn't, they weren't foreclosed on. Right. And you know, they can, they can, if you have to move and things are not gonna change financially, you know, things will improve. And, and that's the message that we have. But you have to be real about where you are today. And we have to also be real about our partnerships, which is, the partnerships that I have with many of whom are MBA uh, members, you know, we couldn't do it without. We, we absolutely could not work. We've got to work together because we, meaning the counseling organizations and the community organizations, we can influence the behavior and the thoughts of the people that the industry is trying to get to. So when we go together, you know, we can wrap our arms around, as I said earlier, the people who are ready today, they can go to the uh, to your members. And then, of course, I'm a member too, but you can go to your, your Lindy members, uh, go to them as well. And, and But the people who are not so ready, they will go to many of the entities that are part of the MBA's advisory council. And we so love that and just love everything that you guys are doing. Oh, well, thank you. So. I'm gonna pivot off of 
Home Free USA, and more on Marcia. Mm -hmm. As you ventured in your career and then had that moment of clarity where in January you said, this is, this is what I'm going to do. You had this marketing background, which clearly served you well. Can you describe any instance, learning, lesson, anything in your career that was a pivotal moment for you? Yes and no. Let me just say, yes, uh, I've had many reality checks. You know, in starting a business and especially as an entrepreneur, you sort of go in with your eyes wide open. Oh, you're going to do, you know, a million things and things are going to happen immediately. Well, we've learned through life and in business that things don't happen immediately. And certainly uh, for me, you know, I must say that in the first year I launched Home Free USA. Our birthday is July 11th. So that's why I launched this uh, will be 30 years this year. Anyway, you know, I, I, I figured, oh my goodness, I'm going to work with all the churches and the people and this, that, and the other. And, you know, Marsha, quite frankly, I was just so energized by our work and what we were going to do. All of my messaging, all of my messaging when I went to churches and did a lot of speeching, uh, speaking, I did not remind people that they had to have a job. <laughs> In order to buy a house. Just come on in. Look, you want to do better? We can help you. Let's get our credit together. Uh, you know, we all feel the same, are on the same path. We need to work together. And then, you know, I tell you, one in one instance, uh, I was working with this huge church and you know, getting people to come in for all of the classes and all, but half of the people didn't have a job. They were homeless. <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh my Lord, you know, I have really missed the mark here. I'm going to turn things around and make sure that I'm very, very, very detailed. Uh, you know, to buy a home, you got to have a job, you got to have some income uh, coming in, you've got to have some money saved or a means of, uh, of saving money. So, you know, I, I learned a lot uh, moving forward. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I also found that. I found the value of partnerships, uh, partnerships on the personal side uh, as well as on the professional side. And I must say that I've learned a lot from you guys uh, with Empower, uh, just the quality of the speaking, the gifts, the, just the quality of, of how things are done. I've, I've, I've modeled many of my conferences <laughs> behind you guys. So, you know, you've got to get out here. You've got to learn. You've got to learn. You've got to see things. You've got to know people who are doing bigger and better things and try to learn from them in terms of the partnership. So quality uh, of, of, of work is very important to me. And partnerships are also very important. Uh, in the mortgage industry, one thing that I feel uh, is that the many of our mortgage leaders need to get closer to the communities in which they serve. Now, when I say that, I mean closer with a, a person or an entity that can vouch for them. You know, so when you have a, a person like Home Free USA or any nonprofit organization that's working with one of your members, a big bank or, or an independent, uh, to, for us to say how great this entity is, it's important. It is important because trust is a big factor when we're talking about this kind of money. So we've got to work together. The partnerships are important. The quality is important. The customer experience is, um, is important. People have to think well of the people that they're dealing with. I mean, and you know, this is kind of personal. People, people work with people who they like and trust. And so by working together, um, and, and I've, I've done much more of that, much more of that through the years. And the partners that we have now are, are extraordinary and I love them and we couldn't do without them. So that's on the for-profit side. On the non-profit side, well, I have 54 
uh, organizations around the country. And what I'm really proud of with them, not only are they great performers, but we're very, very diverse. So I feel that, you know, we represent in the Home Free USA Network, we represent the new America, the real America, where you've got people of all races and cultures and, and colors coming together to learn from each other, to be about business, to understand, you know, how we can deliver the kind of ROI that our partners are looking for. For. And yes, we are nonprofit organizations, but nonprofit doesn't mean no profit. Uh, what we're doing, we are a public benefit corporation, so our money goes back in to reach more people, to teach more people, to guide people so that our world, our people will feel better and be better. That's very inspirational, and it leads me to my very last question, because you're the perfect person to answer it. What would, advice would you give to everybody who watches this on what we need to do to attract and retain young professionals, mm -hmm. right? Our industry is that of an older generation and we're trying to attract and retain diverse young talent. What do we need to do? What's your advice? Because you're reaching out and you're bringing all these young professionals together. Excellent question and yes, our next generation of leaders are the Gen Zers. They are very entrepreneurial. They want to give back. They want to reach high. So uh, in our work, which is called the Center for Financial Advancement, and thank you so much, the MBA, for you guys have been a part. I mean, you, you all have been a part of everything that I've done from day one, even with our Center for Financial Advancement. You all were right there with us from the very beginning. Now we're at 17 schools. Wow. We started off with one. Now we're at 17 schools, and we uh, empower and nurture and develop close to 400, uh, 400 HBCU students. Those are the ones that are on a paper performance, but we reach about a thousand a year. Though they're not being paid, but they are learning. And uh, so what does it take to reach these kids, these young adults? Because they hate for me to call them kids, but you know, they're 18, 19, 20 year olds. Um, exposure. You know, they want to see people like themselves in positions. So we introduce them to just a myriad of, of, of you know, people and different who are high up and black people, white people, younger people. They want to see people like themselves who are in positions of power. Uh, they are very interested in working in our industry. They love the industry, they wanna make money. Now, of course, one big problem that most of these guys have, and this is with, the, I think, probably younger people in general, they think money's gonna just pop out, of, come automatically. Well, we have to work towards this. We've gotta produce, we've gotta be an important um, employee uh, in a company. So all of this works together. So what do, we, what do they need? They need exposure. They need encouragement. Many of the students at, certainly at HBCUs, come from single parent households. So home ownership is really big for them. And Marsha, I will tell you that our very first Center for Financial Advancement intern, Nicholas Whiteside, he's become a homeowner. He worked here, yeah. that was first internship. Uh, he's a homeowner. Now we have so far, uh, eight HBCU students have become homeowners by the age of 22. That's awesome. Yep. That is awesome. And it's just exposure, you know, exposure where the, you know, they, they just want to do better. They need the guidance. They need the uh, oversight and understanding about money and credit. We have uh, our, our conference is called Money for Life because that's what they want. Our sessions during the school year, we have one that's called Never Be Broke. <laughs> I mean, you know, so we come up with titles that would, you know, that's, that's of interest. That speaks to, to them. That speaks to them, exactly. And they are so encouraged. Uh, they, they want to know more. We want to, in our industry, in the mortgage industry, introduce them to more younger people, you know, people who are in their 20s and 30s who are not 
all loan officers who have different professions in the mortgage industry, they need to meet uh, these young leaders because that's gonna encourage them to also become a young leader. We want more of them in this industry. And I can tell you, they are ready, willing and able to come on in and show you what they can do. That's, Marcia, first of all, I am so inspired by our conversation. I feel like I need to do more. <laughs> Um, and congratulations on all your success. I really appreciate, again, all of your support. You come to our Empower events. You come Absolutely. to MBA yes, Annual. Yes, That's you right. bring Jim with you, That's and I've right. met your daughters. Yes. And I will say, if anybody wonders what happens to any of those leftover backpacks or conference <laughs> bags that we have, we donate them to you Marcia's sure organization, and all those students are Absolutely. walking around with MBA backpacks. They, so. they sure are. Thank and Marcia, you. They're so appreciative, and thank you so much.